Today we will talk to Pascal Chevreau. He's um, an expert in conversational AI at NVIDIA. And I'm very, very proud that you are here at our um, voice tech up uh, speech um, and, and interview session. And um, yeah, so conversational AI, AI technologies like ISR and uh, text to speech are becoming more and more relevant, especially in contact center environments, but also uh, in the environment of the upcoming metaverse and in other uh, use cases. And uh, yeah, I, I give the word to you, uh, um, Pascal. Uh, what what uh, do you provide in terms of conversational AI at NVIDIA? My pleasure to be there and thanks for inviting me, Nina. Uh, yeah, what we are doing at NVIDIA, on uh, we are working actively on, on all the conversational AI related stuff uh, because that's very important and we are willing to use AI to enhance, uh, let's say, the experience in the call center to help the uh, the agents to be better uh, and to uh, to achieve their goal faster uh, because that, that's massive. <clears throat> there is more than 500 uh, daily calls 500 million daily calls uh, on, on call centers, but that's uh, as well on, on consumer applications. Uh, that's not only related to call centers. You can have, uh, just imagine today when you are ordering foods, you have a kiosk and you need to push the button, but why not talking to, to an avatar? And, or voice and, commerce or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, voice commerce. A voice is everywhere, online meetings. We've been able, we worked a lot on uh, online uh, recently. And that will not stop. And would it be good to have a transcription of our discussion and then automatic summarization of the call, taking the notes and so on? So that's something doable today. Uh, but first of all, we need to transcribe the call accurately, and then we can apply many NLP tasks behind. Cool. Cool. And uh, maybe you can like outline uh, your use cases you have in this field. So uh, NVIDIA Reva is one, one option to, to do this. Um, yeah, let, yeah, let, let me let, maybe let... show what you, you've done in this field. Yeah, let me share some slide then uh, uh, to, to illustrate a bit. Uh, so share my screen. Okay, cool. Uh, I, I wish you see my slide. Yeah, uh, everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, and what you are seeing here is is an example of contact center. Uh, you have a customer and an agent talking together, and uh, we can use River uh, for for the call transcription, and then we can apply many NLP tasks for real time recommendation to help the agent to assist the agent to to bring much better recommendation. You can as well even save. Uh, the call and, and make some summarize for the next call coming and so on. So that, that, that's one use cases. The second one I was using just to highlight was, uh, let's say here you have uh, somebody who's willing to order burgers and, and you have a, a, an avatar. And the avatar, you, you, you are uh, transcribing the speech using River uh, and then you apply NLP task and the dialogue manager. Uh, where uh, you will recommend, let's say, I would like to have a vegetarian uh, food, and then you can recommend some uh, some vegetarian option, and you use Riva TTS text to speech uh, to to uh, to give the voice of your avatar, and then you will be able to to animate an avatar. You you also so have this doing? module of uh, animation, right? To yes. To build avatars. Yes, we can build avatars, and I can show you demos later on if you wish, where we are we are using uh, using our technology called Omniverse, where we'll be able to animate an avatar. You know, we'll animate the complete face of the avatar uh, using a technology called Audio to Face. So we'll animate the the lips and all the, the complete face with uh, according to the audio. And then we'll be able to animate the complete body of the avatar as well. I, I can show you some demo if you wish <laughs> later on. Yeah, we think we will maybe make a next session for Omniverse too. But, yeah. but everything linked. Uh, and, and as you see here, uh, Riva is the speech part of the entire, uh, entire avatar. Uh, there is as well, you know, video call. That's what I've said. You, you know, you can do sentiment analysis and summarization. So you transcribe the call. You can even do translation. 
would it be nice that I speak in, in French, for example, and you have automatic translation in your native language, you can answer to that. So that's something we can do as well. So mm -hmm. there is plenty of applications uh, and we are uh, we are controlling a lot of things with Void. Mm -hmm. What we have achieved, if I take some example, I'm navigating the slides, but here we have uh, some use cases that we saw and customer of us who are using, they, they need, what we need to understand is that the first part will be the code transcription, the yep. ASR. And the ASR needs to be the best accurate possible. Because if you are not 100, you will never be 100% accurate. Don't get me wrong. But, but the, the best accuracy you'll have will drive all the tasks behind if you do sentiment analysis or some search. So the accuracy is very important. Yeah. So we have a company in finance, they've used Riva uh, for, for offline transcription and virtual assistant as well. And, and they've been able to improve by uh, their accuracy and their speed of execution by 5x. And now uh, they, are, they are real time. T-Mobile, uh, they've used with uh, their thousand of agents in their call centers and they have, have improved the accuracy uh, versus the solution they were using uh, before by 2x. And they improve by 10x uh, using Riva uh, the speed uh, of the transcription and the real-time analytics, and they are doing recommendation uh, to their to their agents to be more agile. Ring Central, they are using uh, that in uh, video calls where they do uh, meeting summarization automatically. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. great, mm -hmm. honestly. And, and, and uh, if I can but... just ask something, this is like, do you provide also the um front end uh with this summarization or it's the service and um, the speech service uh, how was that made in those use cases was it like you know um developing an interface for the agent or was it even an out of the box option from from nvidia no nvidia we are we are providing solution development kit we are not providing for the speech ai and api so uh, if I if I go back uh, just to illustrate this one, uh, Riva, what it is, is not a service. We are providing uh, models for text to speech uh, and, and and speech to text. Um, so if we look the text to speech, uh, the uh, the speech to text, sorry, the ASR automatic speech recognition. What we are doing, we are providing the platform to execute all the uh, ASR uh, models, because it's not only one model, there is the acoustic yeah. model, there is the language model, there is the punctuation model, there is yeah, many exactly. models that needs to work all together. So we are we are working, uh, we are providing the platforms to execute all those models the fastest way possible. Uh, 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 and then you can scale very easily. So it's, it's run on GPUs. And uh, to reduce the cost of execution, Riva brings a very optimized solution uh, to, uh, to execute ASR and CTS. On top of that, we are providing out-of-the-box models, which are state-of-the-art for ASR. We are supporting many languages, such as Spanish, English, English US, English uh, British. We are, uh, we are providing as well the French, uh, Russian, um, Mandarin, uh, Japanese, and we have coming soon uh, Italian. Um, uh, yeah. So, so many languages. We are supporting many languages, Portuguese, and so on, uh, out of the box. And all those models can be customized because that's one of the mandatory uh, thing you need to customize by your own jargon. You yeah. don't have one customer that speaks the same language as another one. That was the next question I wanted to ask. Um, you still have this customization phase, uh, depending of the industry and customer, of course. And uh, what were your experiences there when when coming to those use cases you you presented? This always takes a little bit time to to do, right? Customization is one of the strong assets of Riva because most of the customers are using out-of-the-box model. But as, uh, as I said, 
you don't want your company names, for example, to not be uh, transcribed correctly. There is a lot of acronyms within the companies or name of products and so on. And, uh, and you are willing to have the, the best transcription possible. So you need to have customization. And what Riva brings, let me jump in a slide. You mm -hmm. know, I have so many slides, but I, I think it, it's good to <laughs> yeah, it's to illustrate. As I said, a pipeline for automatic speech recognition is not only one model. It's several models who works together, like the acoustic model, the language model, the punctuation and capitalization model. We have even uh, the inverted text normalization model. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what we provide out of the box state of the art with, because we have trained those models with a lot of data ourselves. So you can use the model ourselves, yourself, but you can fine tune uh, the model at every step. You can fine tune the acoustic model if you wish uh, for different accents, for very noisy environment or specific pronunciation mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. related to the acoustic. Uh, you can, if you'd like to bring some domain specific wording, you can retrain the language model if needed, or you can just customize the um, the uh, vocabulary file or retrain the entire model. You can do everything. You can fine tune the uh, punctuation model if you'd like the inverter. Why we are using inver inverse text normalization model is, you know, to have 10 o'clock to be written as 10, 10 o'clock uh, in, in numbers, in digits. Same with the uh, uh, some some let's say uh, confirmation numbers mm -hmm. or so on mm -hmm. or IDs or or card card details and so on. So that can be customized hundred percent. You can do uh, word boosting if you have a word that you would like to boost the probability. It's possible. So Riva brings customization of the model from from the beginning to an end. I would say yeah and yeah like that. The customers will take the out of the box model from Nvidia. If I take the slide, you take the out of the box model at NVIDIA, you fine tune the model and you build your own. And nobody yeah. will have exactly the same model. You build your own and you can customize in every way. And once your model is fully customized, you can uh, execute using Riva, the best uh, platform, I would say, to, to have the real time, because what we need, you need to have the lower latency possible. Uh, if you'd like to be real time and you need to scale because sometimes you have thousands of 10,000 of agents and, and the scaling is not uh, easy, but with Riva, it's very easy and you can execute everywhere because sometimes you will execute in the cloud. Sometimes you are willing to execute on-prem for data privacy. Uh, sometimes even at the edge, when you are in a shop and you are willing to have an assistant in the shop, you can execute directly there. Mm -hmm, so Riva mm -hmm. is very... Uh, can be executed everywhere the fastest about, way possible and that go ahead. comes to my next question what about the um, on-premise options i mean the data is of course analyzed on on many machines um do you have any options there for switzerland or how does that look like i'm not sure i get your point so if i if we want to have like um um, the data not going out from Switzerland, uh, what would be the, the options? That's, that, that's your call, I would say. Uh, that's the end customer call because we are not uh, we are not providing an API. We are providing an SDK. Then yeah. if, if the customer is willing to stay even in their premise, uh, they will have to have uh, some servers or, uh, and the number of servers depends of the number of concurrent calls they are willing mm -hmm. to transcribe, of mm -hmm. number of streams they are willing to, to transcribe. So it can remain within the company. You can install that in a local cloud provider where who have data center in Switzerland, and then the okay. data will stay in Switzerland. Uh, Riva is very flexible. Uh, we will, in, uh, uh, or you can install that. Uh, 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 on the other world, other side of the world, if you wish, uh, you can install it everywhere you want. So I could use the SDK and um, deploy it on a on a cloud, even Look. on a cloud system in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you you need to have the local uh, cloud provider uh, 
uh, no. in Switzerland who, who has uh, GPUs because River runs on GPUs. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and this is it. And then you will be able to deploy River uh, cool. in a containerized, very easy. Uh, coming back to your use cases, maybe you've shown, um, they were very exciting. Maybe you can go back to the use cases. Yeah, I'll go to this one. Uh, yeah. You know, there yeah. is the electric cars. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, you, you have showed now cases in the customer care center field. Um, Maybe there, how how were the experiences when automating the customer care center? Um, how many agents work uh, now with uh, support of NVIDIA Riva in those cases? How, how are your, yeah, let's say experiences there? How should, yeah. should you start? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what we are seeing here, the benefit of having, of having a, uh, uh, AI assistance to handle the customers. Usually companies, they have uh, uh, some agents and they have a lot of calls. And I'm pretty sure, you, I'm pretty sure Nina, sometimes you are calling a, a support, I would say for for product or so, and you are queuing for 30 minutes and so on and nothing's up and you just hear uh, a, a good or bad music. And sometimes you get pissed because the music is so long. And we can do a lot of that. Uh, in some case, uh, we had some customers say 70% of the calls can be handled by a machine because sometimes it's very easy task. Or you can even prepare the call, uh, getting the numbers, getting the uh, uh, the reasons, getting mm -hmm. the, the contract numbers and so on. And all of that can be automated. Yeah. And when the agents pick up the phone, Everything is already done, you know. Uh, they recognize it's Nina. They get your contract number. They get the reason why you are calling. They get everything. And that can be done with a machine. But first of all, it will start with uh, automatic speech recognition. If we look in that case, uh, mm -hmm. NLX, uh, for, uh, you know, they are putting those uh, box, uh, the juice box into your garage for you to, to charge the car. And sometimes you have issues. And 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 they 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 reduce the handle time done by uh, the agents from nine minutes to five minutes, forty four percent, because a lot of pre processing have been done by the machine automatically using yeah. River. Uh, <clears throat> they decrease the onboarding time by seventy five percent from twenty days to five days. And, and and what is very important is that the customer uh, satisfaction improve by 50%. And, and because they they, uh, they use the machine to do, let's say, the basic basic task at the beginning. So that was a, a very uh, great use case. And that's what we are seeing in call centers, for example. Mm -hmm. And what are your experiences there? How, how many like bot channels should you start with? Uh, like opening up? three opening up five concurrent channels or do you have there any experiences that, that, that depends what you are looking to achieve if you are doing in that case uh, you know that, that's one case but that's the number of people who will who will call you know uh, mm -hmm. if you look that case uh, which is the uh, contact center agent assist probably you will have one stream per agent uh, to 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 get the calls. And so if you have ten thousand agents, you will have ten thousand streams because you are coaching yeah. each other. You know, I had a customer call talk to me and say, "We are doing post processing. We are analyzing what the the agent are are telling uh, to uh, to uh, to their clients at the end of the day, and we are doing only five percent of them because it costs a lot." To, mm -hmm. to record and to do the transcription and then doing mm -hmm. the analysis. And then when, when the agent haven't told, haven't said that the call is recording, let's say at the, at the beginning of the call, he's beaten. Hey, why you haven't told that? But it's too late, you know, because the, it yeah. was from previous day. And I talked to the customer. Instead of beating the guys, the agent, let's coach them. If you do it real time, and then I take this example, if after one minute he haven't talked to his told to his customer uh, that uh, the call is recorded, 
you can have a warning saying, hey, you haven't told that. And in that case, you coach, the, you coach him. Or, uh, you know, they have to respect the script. And if mm -hmm. they are not respecting the script, if you do it real time, you mm -hmm. can coach him, say, hey, you should tell that, you know, you highlight on his screen what he, what he needs to say or so. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of beating, being, uh, doing post-processing analysis. So yeah, that's yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what I like with AI because you, uh, I think the uh, the life of uh, agent in contact center is very complicated. Uh, they get a lot of calls. And every they also day. need a lot of time to, let's say, uh, enter some information after the call, like <coughs> maintaining uh, CRMs and stuff like that. And if you can just like record it and put it in a database in a structured. Uh, format that's uh, a lot of help right uh, and that's do, that's put you know we have customers and i cannot disclose every customers but they are doing uh the uh the the typing let's say uh into mm. uh, the crm automatically exactly. they yeah. are putting connections they are extracting so while they talk automatically mm -hmm. it fill up uh, all the fields mm -hmm. of, of, of the crm which make the agent, you know, more available to talk to the customers and to solve these issues. Yeah. And that's yeah. something, you know, we were thinking that's a dream, but that's possible today. But you need to start with a very great ASR. Yeah. 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 Have you there any experiences how much time that takes to, to achieve the great ASR? Is it, are we talking about one year, two year effort? No, no. Some months. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah. That depends what you are stating. The rate uh, we had, we had customers who went uh, into a very noisy environment. When they start, they were at uh, twenty-seven percent were their rate because it was noisy and there is a lot of acronyms and so on. And after three months, they've been able to decrease from twenty-seven percent to nine percent in less than three months. And and what we will recommend is first of all test the out of the box model, understand what are the uh, let's say the mistakes. If it's always some words that the model doesn't know, uh, it, it, you will just have to add some vocabulary into the uh, vocabulary file, which can be done in in seconds. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. again, uh, that that depends customers to customers. Uh, where they will need to to adjust the model, but it can be it can be done very quickly. I had some customers who were thinking, "Hey, we need to train the model and so on," and they use the out of the box model. And after one week of testing and uh, and adding the vocab into the vocabulary file, even without retraining the language model, uh, they had a very satisfying. Uh, 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 transcription and they say yeah we can start going with that and mm -hmm. then they keep mm -hmm. they keep improving uh, on, uh, on uh on on daily or weekly basis but but they can start already on production yeah 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 uh, but they also do some uh, they need to do annotation so um annotate that depends what you are willing to achieve because most of the time people feel that to train uh, an ASR model, you need to have uh, annotated data and so on. And that's mainly to train the acoustic uh, acoustic model. And, and and what we observed is most of the time, our customers are not retraining the acoustic model. They just add some vocabulary or retrain the language model, which is only text. Yeah. Uh, and, and they don't need to have, uh, to retrain the acoustic model. Uh, at least with the one we are providing, because we are spending a lot of effort to, mm -hmm. to bring the, the best model accuracy uh, uh, on, on the acoustical side. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And what we do at NVIDIA is we have many releases of Riva, one every month. And, and all the time, we are bringing new models, but not, not only on new languages. Sometimes we are taking one language and we improve the language. And, and, and like that, you can take the benefit of our work, but just by changing from one version to another version. Yeah, yeah. So I assumed you can also like optimize, uh, make optimized translations so you don't have to retrain again the whole NLP in another language. For <clears throat> what we are doing, we are, Riva is doing ASR and TTS 
and we are providing as well a translation models mm -hmm. uh, nvidia so you can use nvidia translation model uh, that we are providing in several languages as well uh, to do some translation i have I, I, again i have a customers they are talking to german they are talking german and it does automatic uh, translation in english and and within three weeks they have been able to build their their application to do so so because they, they, they didn't retrain any model they just add some vocabulary and mm -hmm. did word boosting into uh, the um, uh, into the uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. into the ASR part and the translation was uh, they used the uh, nvidia out of the box uh, translation mm -hmm. model mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay uh, good now we, we've seen a lot of a lot of uh, cool features and use cases and uh, maybe can you little bit explain what uh, what makes uh, makes it so unique compared to other conversational interfaces i mean there is uh, of course um, from google dialog flow or from microsoft um, azure some uh, cognitive services but also uh, um, sis solutions what makes it unique what makes it unique uh... I, I, I will go there. I will go there uh, uh, in a pain point. Why, 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 why River instead of the other solution? Because of customization. We are providing uh, out of the box model, which are state of the art. When we say state of the art, is we compare with our peers, and the target is to be as good or better uh, in terms of out of the box, in terms of accuracy. And then, as I as I showed before, you can customize the model in every angle, and then the model become yours. So that that that's one of the strong assets, uh, the customization of the model, because that's the beginning of the entire journey of a chatbot, for example, or uh, or, or a digital avatar and so on. So that, that's very important, and, and the accuracy is, is one of the, the the main criteria of selecting River. The second one is the latency. The yeah. latency uh, we are bringing a lot of efforts to reduce as much as possible the latency. So uh, 300 milliseconds is what we think is the maximum you can you you need to do to do real time, and that's what a River is delivering on GPUs. And uh, and then the the third thing is what you said. Uh, before sometimes you don't want your data to go outside uh, the country or go going outside even the company and, and Riva, you you decide where you would like to uh, to execute it can be on prem on the cloud it can be hybrid it can be embedded everywhere so uh, so that's that's the three strong assets you have of Riva. the customization the the scaling uh, 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 and the latency reduce latency uh, uh, and 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 where you are uh, and you are choosing where you are willing to deploy very flexible so that that's the the strong asset uh, to bring uh, and probably you have to to look as well of the cost uh because a uh, river uh is very aff affordable and, and the scaling we have on gpus are tremendous uh, so the 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 necessary compute that you need to execute Riva is way reduced. I had a customer uh, was using CPUs to to execute their ASR, mm -hmm. and I told them, "Hey, just check Riva and, and use GPUs." He was surprised at the beginning, and he was pretty skeptical. And then he, okay, I was good, so I convinced him just to give a try. And his answer after was, "Hey, Pascal, why you didn't told me that before? Because I can save a lot of money." <laughs> yeah, we have, yeah, yeah. We have a customer. Uh, uh, again, that's public as well. Uh, they did a talk uh, during our conference, and they say if they were using Hyperscalus solution, it would have cost them per year $12 million. By using Riva, they move that down to $2 million. So so cost is, is again, uh, a, a very strong uh, asset for, for, for Riva. Yeah. Okay. I think that it's a lot of, a lot of arguments. Uh... To, to explore uh, NVIDIA Riva 